hi everyone. Uh, good afternoon. We are going to hold this roundtable in English uh, to uh, keep you awake after the, the lunch. We hope uh, this will be uh, our main goal, but uh, we'll see. So I, I'm Tanguy Bertolis. I'm uh, CEO of uh, Lyon Airport, and I'm particularly happy to participate in this second uh, Etat de l'Air. This edition takes place at a particularly important time for air transport, uh, obviously in the post-COVID recovery phase. And we all know how much this uh, epidemic uh, hit our sector very hard. This day provides um, an opportunity to discuss the state of air transport and the enormous challenges that we will uh, be facing in the years to come, thanks to ENAC alumni uh, to Mark, to uh, inviting me and giving giving me the impo this opportunity to lead this roundtable. Of course, one of uh, these major challenges I will not surprise everyone anyone is the decarbonization of our sector. Whatever our role in the uh, transport value chain, whatever our companies, aircraft manufacturers, suppliers, airlines, airports, ground handlers, administration. We will all have to work hard for many years to reduce and then cancel, hopefully, our greenhouse gas emissions for air transport. It is a vital issue. Uh, there is a, a real speed race that is being uh, played out between two kinds of uh, people. The one who advocate a decrease in our sector and those who on the contrary, and I think we are uh, a lot of them uh, today in the room, think that uh, the air transport is essential, and particularly the, the, mobili the mobility and the, mobili the air mobility is essential, and uh, want we want to develop air carbon, carbon neutral air transport as quickly as possible. We all know the major projects that are being developed to speed up decarbonization in the years to come, electric aircraft, uh, sustainable avia fu aviation fuels, hydrogen aircraft, engine improvements, ATM procedures, and so on. We are less talking about the complementarity between the different modes of transport. Moreover, when we talk about air transport and uh, rail, it's often to oppose the, the two modes of transport and to, to have battles of figures which aim more to uh, defend theses than to think concretely on uh, improvement actions. Can the complementarity between modes of transport, also known as intermodality, be one of the levers for decarbonizing air transport? This is the main question that we will explore with the four participants to this roundtable. I'm very glad to welcome Raphael Schwarzman, who is uh, Vice President Europe for uh, IATA. Giza Klad, Senior Vice President uh, for Charles de Gaulle Hub and Ground Operation at Air France. Fabrice Morenon, Managing Director at SNCF Hubit Connections. And Philippe Crevassa, CEO at Toulouse Airport. So without further ado, I suggest we get to the heart of the matter. Perhaps we're starting by looking behind us. Uh, before talking about the future, we have two TGV stations integrated into airports in France, one in Paris CDG and one in Lyon. And we can talk about the feedback we can make from more than 20 years of air TGV intermobility. So maybe Fabrice, if you want to, to give us some, uh, some feedback of uh, the last, last years of uh, intermodality. Yes, thank you very much. Maybe. Uh, can I introduce myself very briefly? I am Fabrice Morenon. I am the managing director of SNCF Ups and Connection, which is a dedicated subsidiary uh, of SNCF Group in, char in charge of international development. And um, my business is to manage station internationally. And just a couple of words. I had this idea three years ago, and I have a model. My model was uh, not Air France, but Aéroport de Paris. And because Aéroport de Paris used to, to manage airport internationally. And I thought it was a real success. And I say, why don't we do the same thing with railway station? Because it's a, it's a, it's a fantastic market. And maybe in a couple of years, this market will, will grow. 
Unfortunately, we had to face the pandemic. So in all the perspective of the business now, it's more complicated. But I do believe in that business. That's why you say the word, complementary. I'm not the guy who are going to say you that you have to oppose rail and, and plane and flight. I do believe in the complementary between these two modes of transport. And I personally, I really enjoy uh, to take a plane and I really believe that uh, it's very interesting that this round table, it's very, very important. So in France today, uh, currently we have only, I say only, uh, two high-speed railway station. As you say, we have uh, Lyon Saint-Exupéry, Saint which is an amazing station because it's designed by uh, the Spanish architect, uh, Carlos uh, Calatrava. And I, I think it's very beautiful. And we also have uh, Roissy Charles de Gaulle uh, railway station. And in a couple of years, we'll have a third high-speed railway station uh, in Orly. And it's very important to have uh, another railway station in France to connect plane and railways. Uh, maybe um, just a few figures. Uh, Charles de Gaulle um, railway station. And you know, I have to read my note because and, and it's a sign, you know, it's a sign of, it, it's kind of a new subject for us. And I think that we all have to work together if we want to boost, you know, the traffic and the ridership between a uh, train and plane. So uh, in uh, Roissy Charles de Gaulle, we have 15 million passengers per year, 15 million. It's not a lot. Imagine Paris North Station, one of the top uh, railway stations in France and in Europe. Guess it's 200 million passengers per year. So we, we, we have a lot of job and work to do. Um, in, in Charles de Gaulle, well, it's, it's a nice station, but we expect to, to increase and to target, uh, the, to double the number of, of ridership in those stations. So we expect to target 30 million passengers in 2030. That, that's a, re a, a real target. Uh, well, in Lyon saint exupery unfortunately, uh, the figures is only 1.5 million passengers each year. We can do better, definitely. Uh, and in Orly Station, in a couple of years, uh, I hope that uh, we will target 100,000 passengers each year. It's very important because it will connect the south of Paris uh, you know, uh, to all the high-speed railway, what we call in France, it's kind of corridor, between all the high-speed train will be able to connect the Paris and Bordeaux, etc., etc. So it's very, very important. I don't know if you have some questions, if you want to go deeper. I, I could talk during hours on, on this subject, so... In terms of uh, intermodality, uh, because there is this, this uh, service uh, provided by yeah. SNCF and Air France, do you have some figures? I know that, that Guy has uh, some, some figures, so uh, maybe uh, to have the point of view from, uh, from Air France on that subject. Uh, thank you, Taki. Uh, yes, uh, Air France has more than 20 years or, of experience of intermodality in CDG, and like everyone, the question is no longer whether intermodality is nice or not nice. It is a wonderful project. It's a wonderful product. The question is, what is the relevant scope, and how do we make it work? Uh, that's, that's the only question. There is no question of principle, and we are very much in favor of our intermodality wherever it is relevant. Uh, so looking at the figures uh, of these 20 years, 20 years of experience give us some feedback on what is working, what is not working. We have experienced great successes. We have also experienced some failures, and failures are relevant to improve the service. So uh, uh, we are having two types of service of selling both mixed, uh, a full package train plus airplane ticket, one directly with the SNCF, it's called the former TGVR, and one we have directly air high over Brussels. The difference is a luggage uh, service, where in the TGVR, uh, the customer has to manage his luggage uh, personally in the Brussels service, we take care of the, of the luggage. Uh, the figures we have in our front of this combined ticket are unfortunately much smaller figures than the figure you have said. We estimate that we have uh, roughly 250,000 passengers buying this combined ticket, train plus, um, uh, plus airplane tickets. So it's a much smaller figure than the total number 
of a passenger using the train station. When we make some survey with uh, Mark, who is in charge of uh, CDG Airport, asking, uh, we, we estimate that the number of customers making connection, but making self-connection, not making usage of our joint service, is five times higher. So it means that this is an area of improvement because most of the customers prefer to do self-connect by the train ticket, by the airplane ticket separately, on not making use of our joint um, product. So it, it triggers some question. Why? Um, the, the good point is that there is a huge room of improvement. So what can we fix uh, to convince a customer that we can jointly, uh, the railway and the front, and other airlines they want to join, uh, provide the best service for this intermodality, and we have room of progress, and I will come back later if you want to, what is perfectly working and what could be improved. Thank you, Guy. Uh, Raphael, you have obviously a, a vision of what's happening uh, elsewhere in, in Europe or in the world in terms of positive experience in terms of, um, of intermodality. Do you have uh, any other examples that, uh, that are working or, or have been working in the past or, or not? Well, uh, uh, well, first of all, thank you very much for, uh, for inviting me here. Really an honor and apologies. Uh, my French is not as good, so I, I cannot uh, speak in French, but uh, really good to be here. Um, uh, second, I think this is a, a quite relevant topic, as it was said already by my predecessors here. Uh, it is definitely about collaboration. It is definitely about, um, um, you know, there are synergies here that are, you know, high potential. We all kind of speak to it, but we are still not getting there, right? So I think the opportunities um, are there. I mean, obviously, France, in this case, and already spoken, um, has a leadership position in, in this area because you already have some very important experience. I mean, you mentioned the, the measures that you're already having. I mean, obviously, uh, you're also connecting other places besides France, right? I mean, you have connections to, uh, uh, to Brussels, to Amsterdam, and other places, which is over, it's very important in the context of Europe and the connectivity of Europe if you want to really tackle this challenge, right? Um, the other thing, uh, well, we obviously are aware of uh, the experience of, for example, Frankfurt, right, which has also uh, a very, I would say, strong program uh, with Deutsche Bahn, and, and Amsterdam also is well connected, I would say. Um, outside of the EU, we know, you know, you, you, you've seen the uh, buildup of the Hyperloop in uh, Abu Dhabi, uh, Dubai, for example, to, to be able to tackle that connectivity and, and obviously using those uh, um, hopefully potential synergies, um, but, but we, well, we also, you know, I, I'm based in Madrid in Spain, and you know Spain also as France has a very good uh, railway network, right? Uh, obviously a very strong air network as well, um, but we still um, are not able to see the benefits, right? I mean, we're, the, the discussions about having the high speed reach in the terminal, which you already gave uh, examples of, is, is extremely critical, yes? That's one. Um, the the uh, so I think the the experience is still not enough. One. The the second thing is what it was already said by my my predecessor. I think the focus analysis on this experience uh, and the leverage of the current network that we have. And I'm saying the current one because I I think the potential is there. The network is there. I mean, if you are measuring. X millions from CDG, but only 250,000 uh, actually using the the service. Then the challenges need. I, I'm sure we, you know, there are a few there which could be from standardization to digitalization. But um, still, um, in Europe, we I would say we have some of the more advanced experience in this area. But still, as we have seen yet premature, let's say to say we're optimizing the the network. Th thank you. Uh, Guy, if we, if we want to understand, as you said, what's working and what's not working, maybe we can go deeper into some examples of, uh, sure. of uh, what's the reality of intermodality. So I will name a few examples. There is a perfect match. The perfect match is Brussels, uh, where uh, we no longer, Air France is no longer serving Brussels by, by a plane, and we have six daily trains between CDG and Brussels that meets or hub uh, uh, time, time channel, and we have a wonderful service where we have 
a check-in agency in Brussels station where we provide the ticket, airplane ticket, on train ticket, the baggage is tagged, and we do the handling of the luggage in Brussels station and in CDG station. It is a wonderful, seamless um, product. It is an expensive product because to offer this wonderful experience, we do hand manual handling of the luggage in the two stations. And this is quite expensive, but this for the customer, it is a perfect match of experience. A second almost perfect match is Lille. Uh, where there are many connections between Lille. Lille is a very big city, very important city, a strong business uh, community, and it's less than one hour to Charles de Gaulle Airport. Uh, the customer who needs from Lille to take a long haul ticket, they say that the service, the, the t taking the TGV to uh, CDG is a very efficient service. We do not offer the same service of luggage because uh, it's, very it's very expensive and too expensive for Lille, but it is a very, very good match. It is the almost perfect match. Then the third destination that is working, but then it's kind of the limit of the balance, which is Strasbourg, uh, which is Strasbourg is two hours and 30 minutes from CDG by train. When we stop uh, the serving the um, uh, Strasbourg by plane, we wanted to do the same service as we offered in Brussels with the check-in agency in Strasbourg city, taking the luggage, and it didn't work because it was too expensive for the catchment area. So we move back to the same service as Lille, and at 2 hours 30, we see the limit. People that are staying in Strasbourg, when they have a long haul journey to make, they can either take the train to CDG, they can th take the plane to Amsterdam or London, they can take the bus to Frankfurt, and we see that we are really on the verge. So I mean, 230 minutes, and thus, this is somehow the limit that has been fixed by the French government saying below 230, we should favor train above, plane makes full sense. And clearly, on Strasbourg, we see that it is the, uh, the breaking point. And when we ask our customer what are their main concerns, luggage. Clearly, luggage is the main issue because uh, when you go do a long haul flight and you have uh, luggage, if you have uh, to go, I mean, the train station is two levels below, it's uh, about 500 meters to one kilometer. It can be an unpleasant experience. So we have been studying with uh, Paris Airport, is there a pos possibility to uh, have a backdrop in the train station? Because that would be a major step forward. Uh, it is possible, I mean, technically there it is possible, there is a sort of not too far from the train station. It, even, it is an expensive project. I mean, uh, uh, we're talking about dozens of millions of euros. So we are wondering, uh, our Paris Airport is wondering whether it's worth doing it or not. And I understand since it is a lot of money, but that would be somehow a game changer. And the next thing, if you want to provide a seamless service to a customer, is to do like uh, from the departure point to the arrival electronic ticketing because currently the TGVR the customer has to have a paper ticket to go to, to a ticket so it feels sometimes that it is easier to go directly on the SNCF website or on the Air France website and to make to buy two tickets sometimes it's also cheaper which is to me a kind of uh, <laughs> mysterious uh, than uh, so the the two things we would need to improve is. Uh, there's luggage service, and uh, that's something that needs to be worked jointly between uh, the railway operator, the airport operator, and the airline, and then making sure that we have easy connection with a single electronic ticket. Th thank you, Guy. I, I have a very selfish question maybe for, for Fabrice. We have a beautiful ra uh, railway TGV station in Lyon. Why on earth is there no commercial offer for intermodality in Lyon? Can you you have an idea on that? And my next question is, when will it happen? But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, um, in Lyon, I can you say that we don't have any uh, uh, offer for intermobility inter and connection in Lyon. I think we can improve uh, the connection, but in Lyon, we, we, we have a um, high-speed train. Uh, I have to check my figure, you know, <laughs> which deserve 24 cities in the country. Well, we can do better. And we also have Ron Express, which is also a train not um, operated by SNCF, but by Transdev. But definitely, we, we can make, bet make it uh, and have a better connection between this, this uh, railway uh, station 
uh, airport and the rest of the country. I do agree with you. Yes, thank you. But I, I can say something else. Um, I was listening to your example. It's very, very interesting. And, you know, for preparing this round table uh, and we had this discussion, uh, I had a very good friend of mine uh, who is member of parliament in Brussels and he lives nearby Le Mans. So every week he has to visit uh, Bruxelles or different city in Europe. And he's really fond of train. But so, and he has to go to Roissy uh, airport. And the point is that he told me that he is not able to catch a train in the morning to go to Roissy and then to take uh, a plane because the, the timetable from the high speed train from the are, are not earlier. And when he arrives most of the time at 9 or 9 30 in, in Charles de Gaulle, and it's too late to catch the connection to fly all over Europe. So he's, 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 he has to take his private driver to go to Paris and then to catch a train. That, that's a point. And I say, OK, we have to work on that. Philippe, you wanted to add something? Yes, I, w I just wanted to, uh, to say that uh, I can speak also. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, f first, I would like to, uh, to say my gratitude to the uh, organizers uh, for uh, inviting me to, to join this session. It's very good to, to see my colleagues around the table and to, to see you all. Um, I would like to, uh, to echo to, uh, to uh, what Fabrice uh, said. Um, uh, of course, um, the, the, the rail and, and the air are competitors. Let's be honest, they are competitors, but they, they, there is still some room uh, to, to find synergies. And uh, it's it's uh, it's funny to, uh, to 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 listen to you because you you representing uh, the, the two only airport platforms which are directly uh, connected to the uh, high speed rail. Um, I I I am the voice of the uh, other uh, regional platforms which are not connected uh, at all directly, of course. Huh? Uh, but I, I will uh, come back later. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Philippe. Um, so we, 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 we understand with what Guy said that the customer experience is absolutely key to promote intermodality. We, we all know that some uh, new legal obligations uh, uh, went down to us uh, uh, with the, the ban of the flights who are competing with the less than two, th two and a half hour uh, train lines. Uh, did, did you? Do, do you do you expect that uh, this kind of obligations will, you know, enhance or, or uh, improve the figures in terms of uh, intermodality? Is this kind of constraint positive to uh, to uh, develop intermodality? Uh, Who wants, Fabrice Just or? First or of all, it's a very good news for uh, for a fit planet, <laughs> and it's a good news for SNCF and and all for and for the train definitely. Um, and after, as you say, well, I think there is a real complementary between train and, and plane in France. For instance, uh, when you fly, um, well, taking a flight from Paris to Bordeaux, it, it's, I will say it's quite a nonsense, especially if it's a two-hour two -hour journey. However, taking a train to go to Nice or to Toulouse, it's much more efficient to take the plane. So. I think that's why you have to work. Uh, no, you say no. You say no. <laughs> yeah. What? We oh. will have some questions uh, at the end of the session. Okay. I'm supposed so uh, I think we have to work on this complementary uh, way of, of traveling. I, if, we, if we talk about competition, uh, Philippe uh, uh, introduced uh, the subject between uh, rail and, uh, and uh, air travel. Uh, may maybe, Raphael, what's the view of, of IATA on this, uh, on this subject? Uh, competition exists. Uh, uh, do do the, comp the, the the airlines have strategies to to compete against train, or on the contrary, to develop uh, this complementarity? Uh, well, no. I, I I think first of all, I mean, when we talk about intermodality, um, we have to be uh, focusing on driving obviously efficiency, right? And 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 uh, when we talk about it, you know, you actually you just give an example of somebody having to take a driver to go to the airport, right? So, so obviously there is a lot of homework to be done. If that's happening, then 
obviously the passenger will always choose service, right? So if we are not able to uh, address those issues, right, of, of um, um, service-oriented and, and, and uh, focus and market-driven focus, uh, we don't believe necessarily that regulation will change that. Uh, because at the end you are seeing, you know, you, 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 you are going to be taking the car or you're going to be taking the train or you're going to be whatever, whatever it suits you best. And then the cost is also very important. You mentioned about uh, some issues, re well, issues or potentially issues in the sense that, well, we have to analyze cost, right? So we probably um, have a lot of homework to be, uh, to be done in terms of, you know, addressing schedule coordination, uh, probably, right? So you are able to, to do that, right? To address the connectivity. By the way, when we mentioned, we talk about all this connectivity here, we, we, we have to remember, um, uh, uh, I guess, that Europe, before the pandemic, was one of the best connected places in the world. And it was is the main source of our economic strength. So we need to bring that back that connectivity. Anything that will take it backwards it, it will not make economic sense and therefore not sustainable sense, right? So I'm, I'm just saying that because I think there is a high potential, but we need to address the reasons why we are not able to uh, either use effectively the trains. Uh, you mentioned there are, there are issues related to technical issues, standard issues, uh, you know, standardization of certain things. Um, from the user side, passenger experience. Look how difficult it is to fly today compared to if you have to take a train, right? So, but a passenger has to have a seamless experience, right? So I believe um, that, that uh, again, this is, should be market driven because the incentive for all of us is, I think, the sustainability part, right? But it has to be efficient and it has to be sustainable. So I think that's, that's the driver, right? In terms of airline strategy, Guy, uh, if I, if is, is there a France developing this uh, strategy about intermodality? As I've said when, uh, as my first remark, we are very comfortable with the principle of intermodality. And whenever it is relevant, we will uh, actively promote intermodality. The question is defining the right scope of relevancy. And uh, Fabrice has mentioned Bordeaux, and the government has decided that point to point below two hours and 30 minutes was no longer allowed, and we have stopped flying from Orly to Bordeaux, and that's a decision we understand, and we are fine with that. However, we still fly from CDG to Bordeaux, not for point-to-point -point -to -point traffic, but to feed a hub for long-haul traffic, connecting traffic. If we had to stop making flight from Bordeaux to CDG, uh, Customer would not use the train because the train has to go around Paris. There are not enough train, and the experience is not good enough. We will be roughly three hours. What the, the border customer wanted to do to fly long haul, they would still fly long haul. What they would do is that they will fly to Amsterdam, to Frankfurt, to London, and we will shoot ourselves. Uh, uh, so that's, that's a, real, this is a relevant example. So I mean, once again, uh, when there is an efficient intermodality solution that is both ec economically and uh, sustainability working, we will clearly move to it and support it. There is no issue, and again, I said Brussels, Lille are the perfect match. Strasbourg, we, we have decided before it was allowed to, to close the CDG Strasbourg and we are working, but the limit is uh, when there is no uh, clear alternative, and if some regulations kills the alternative, I mean, people will continue to fly long haul, but they will fly through other, more distant hubs. So that's, that's the limit of our strategy. And again, we fully understand and we fully support intermodality whenever, wherever it is relevant. Philippe, you wanted to? Yes, uh, coming back to the, uh, the competition, it's, it's an official statement, so I'm not spoiling anything. We know that uh, the high-speed rail will come to Toulouse in 2030, 2035. Um, and I, I am asked very regularly uh, the, the following questions. Uh, is, is it a threat for the uh, airport uh, in, in Toulouse? Of course it is, and we, uh, we all know that. We, we will lose around 25, 30% of our traffic to, uh, to Paris. But, but we, we also see this as an opportunity to enlarge our uh, catchment area 
you know, the uh, geographical area in which people come to take the plane in Toulouse. And uh, hopefully, if the TGV stops at uh, Agen, uh, Montauban, or uh, even Marmande, we, uh, we hope to see people uh, take the train first and, and get their plane in, uh, in Toulouse. So it's, it's also uh, synergies. Can I add something? I think, well, we are almost we are on the same page. However, I think that um, we don't, if you, you have to, to study deeper the competition, it's not between train and plane, but it's all against the car. Because when you look, you know, at uh, the greenhouse gases, you know, emitted by different modes of transport, the car, it's, it's horrible. And especially if you compare on the different route, uh, you can, a lot of people use the car instead of taking the train. And when we observe what's happened during the pandemic, who is the winner of all this? It's not the, well, it's a car. It's blah, blah car. It's all the people who prefer to take the car to go on vacation or to, to, to as the member of parliament is uh, taking his private driver to go to Charles de Gaulle. That's a shame. Coming back to uh, how do we uh, work to improve uh, intermodality. So l let's maybe uh, stay on this uh, high speed uh, air intermodality and we come back to other forms of, uh, of um, intermodality. Uh, at the, uh, an economical point of view, I would like to be a little mouse to see the meetings between SNCF and Air France when you uh, define the right price for, for the ticket. How does it work? How do you share the value? What's the, the economical model, for example, for, for Air France? People tend to believe that the price is fixed by the airline. It is the customer that, that determines the price. Uh, this, is a, this is a lesson one of review management, is that uh, the price is defined by competition, by how much the customer is willing to, to pay. So that's uh, when we say a ticket from Lyon to, uh, uh, to New York or from, uh, we'll see what are the competition, what are, and, and we'll see what is the, the best, uh, how much we, uh, we can sell it. And again, it is the competition and the customer that decides the price, it's not the airline. Currently, we buy, uh, it's a combined ticket with the, with the add-on of the two tickets. So the question is sometimes it is cheaper for the customer to buy two separate tickets than one integrated ticket, which is a nonsense, and that's something, it's complex for the, for the two businesses, but that's something we need to work together to offer a seamless uh, joint uh, uh, one ticket, and uh, one electronic ticket at an affordable price and having some kind of joint uh, uh, way to, to elaborate the right price to be sure that this intermodality when we offer a joint ticket is the cheapest uh, because it's not always the case. Yes, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's for sure. Uh, Raphael, on the European point of view, do you see uh, consistency on the, this intermodality uh, project? Is uh, the EU working at, on, on this kind of uh, uh, long-term scheme? Do, do you have some insight on that? Well, I think, you know, we are, uh, one of the things that um, this uh, crisis has shown, shown us is that we, are n we have not been very effective in having a harmonized approach to things, right? Uh, and I'm saying that because what we're talking here about is to be able to have a harmonized approach to this, uh, this challenge, which is to uh, fully develop intermodality. Uh, for example, have a, a, a one PNR, right? For, for it's, 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 it's very, very difficult to be able to, to achieve that or have contactless uh, um, uh, ID, you know, and, and be able to use the technology that we have today in a common way. When we are talking about the, the experience of France, I mentioned in the beginning, it's a good one. But we actually need to think what you ask about Euro European-wide uh, because otherwise we will not be able to reap the benefits, right? Because um, the requirements, and there were examples given about um, forcing somebody to, to do, it has to be service-oriented. Somebody needs to travel intercontinentally. It will find a way. I mean, Europe is a very co well-connected uh, region, and it will find a way through any other hubs around Europe to be able to connect. So we need to really 
um, have a common framework in Europe. We have to have a common digital solution, I would say. We, th because of this crisis, I think we all, you know, accelerated the digitalization of the use of digitalization. Now we have, I guess, the homework of something we have not achieved so far. Well, the, 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 the European digital COVID certificate is a great achievement, let's say, but, but obviously we, we still have a lot of work to do in this area to be able to use digitalization, to be able to uh, look seamlessly at the passenger experience, to be able to effectively, um, uh, because we need to put ourselves on the passenger, passenger shoes, right? I mean, you, you know, you, I don't know any of you, but I, I use this and this is my life. Right, and people buy through this, right? And you don't want to be, right, complicating anything, but we're not able to simplify that even today for the COVID situation, right? Where a passenger really has a difficult time even getting through what, I, what, what would I need to do when I get somewhere else? So I think the, the, the important here is uh, to find uh, standard ways to do it across Europe. So I would, I would encourage that because I think that's the work we have to do. And the experience in France, it's a good one, right? Still, as we see, lots of work to be done, but it has to be thought about Europe-wide Europe, Europe uh, wide experience. We have the German case, which we are not talking about here, but obviously it's very extensive as well. I mean, you can actually be ticketing uh, with the Lufthansa, uh, the connection through Frankfurt, and Frankfurt you can connect to different cities, but again, it's, it's, it's one experience. The other thing we need to, we need to look at is, um, um, there are some things, I mean, you, you were mentioning that the high-speed uh, rail uh, will get to, to lose by 2030, right? So, for example, so we're talking this on something that has already been made a decision and is being built. So you, you, the, the challenge here is how we're going to be connecting yeah, longer term, right? when projects like this take such a long time to, to, to come to reality, and at the same time, technology is progressing extremely fast, and then, you know, so you need to bear all of those things in mind if we're gonna be able to develop this intermodality effectively. Yes, yes to, to we, we, have, um, we have 13 partnerships with different companies, uh, so we have Air France, uh, for offering um, a combined ticket, air plus ride, 13. It's not a lot. I think we should improve, you know, the number of partnership. Actually, Actually, I didn't know that at all. It's <laughs> very interesting. I, f I, I find it interesting because uh, to, to obviously be, it's not to very To be very public. frank, before this front table, I was not very aware of all this. And as a customer, I have never experienced it. I'm sorry, but that's true. So I think we have to, to work on, on this. And uh, just to, to, to give you a figure, uh, we, we sell every year 160,000 combined ticket. 160,000 combined ticket. It's not a lot. Maybe if we want to remain optimistic, it's because the customer um, organize their self-connection between train uh, and plane. But I think if we are able to to, to propose a better um, offer, a better supply, maybe it will change you know, the behavior of the customer. And that's our job. Maybe just one comment here, because I think when we talk about intermodality also and competition, I have a thought by listening is, it's very important also to realize when, we thought, when we're looking at customers self-connect and things like that, uh, airplanes or air transport is very agile to be able to connect. So that's part of the competition, if you would, right? You, you can put up connectivity very easily, right? So when, when you, you have to bear that in mind if you're gonna design something that will overcome that or make it even better service than, than that option, right? Because it's, it's a reality. I mean, you can actually connect today very effectively, right, in this, in this network, right? And, and the customer is gonna be looking for that. So it's good to be talking about the customer. So the way to address it, I think, it's, is the challenge. But you know, don't ver don't forget that again, aviation is, in that sense, very agile, and and it's it's just a reality. I'm not criticizing one or the other. It's just we have to understand when we do the analysis of how to increase intermodality, and the potential for it. That that this is also a case, right? You you gave the example again. You 
Bordeaux, Amsterdam, or Bordeaux, London, right? So, and anything else, right? If we talk about the decarbonization, uh, as you said, the car is, uh, is an issue. And uh, for an airport li like Lyon, uh, the, 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 the travel uh, for of the passengers coming to the, to the airport represent one third of the uh, gas emissions, uh, greenhouse effect gas emissions uh, of the airport. So uh, there is also an issue here, not only uh, you know the connectivity with the two legs of the of the travel, but the access to the to the airport. So um, we can develop intermodality on, on this uh, on this uh, aspect as well. Philip, do you have a, uh, a view on that? Yes, but b before that, I'd like to uh, to come back to what uh, Raphael explained. When we have time, we have time to anticipate and. Uh, Considering the, the project for uh, the, the high-speed rail between Bordeaux and, and Toulouse, uh, I'm not sure that the uh, uh, project um, foresees a direct connection between the TGV and the Toulouse airport. Um, it's a shame. Uh, and it's very key to uh, because everything starts with the uh, joint location, talking about intermodality, Be because it's all about uh, the passenger experience. If between point A and point B, the passenger has to uh, take the, the, the train, the tram, and, and um, modal shifts, uh, there is no gain. Um, so so um, um, considering this, um, I would say, a hurdle that we, we, we have to, uh, to overcome, um, I, I'd like to, um, to, sh to show you that um, um, that there is, of course, another perspective in terms of uh, synergies between road and, and air transport, more on a, on a regional and, and local scale. And uh, th this is where the uh, competition with car uh, comes in. Um, f first, the, uh, the, the, the regional train is, uh, is not so much connected to the uh, airport, uh, airport uh, platforms. Uh, it's the case in Strasbourg, uh, uh, to my knowledge, but uh, Toulouse and, and uh, other platforms are not directly co connected. Even though if in Toulouse, the regional railway uh, um, uh, c comes very close to the, uh, to the airport concession. Uh, second, there is also uh, the, the coaches network. Uh, sorry, Fabrice. Uh, but but I think that uh, SNCF also has some uh, coaches capacities, um, and it's also key uh, to have the, uh, the the right network of coaches draining passengers uh, to get their plane. And there is also still some work to do with coaches, as airports most of the time today have more um, I would say coaches parks uh, rather than uh, uh, real coaches coaches station. And um, uh, uh, last point, uh, we, we, uh, we are truly transitioning from uh, uh, a, a mass transport uh, to a mass transport. Uh, there is no joke in what, what I'm saying, I, I want to explain. Uh, the, the traditional way was based on the mass MAS uh, transport of passengers for large numbers of, of passengers, and again, it's the most efficient way uh, to, to transport these large, large numbers. But, but today, and, and it's, uh, I would say, uh, what the car uh, gives to the, uh, to, to the passenger, uh, it, it lacks flexibility. The, uh, the uh, transport, the public transport network, lacks too much, too much flexibility. And then it, it, it wears uh, the uh, mass mobility as a service uh, comes in. Why? Because today we, we, we never had before such a wide and large offer in terms of new mobilities. Uh, car pooling, car sharing, even uh, scooter pooling, um, uh, of course, uh, biking, um, uh, coaches. And the, uh, the airport has a, a truly a, a role to play uh, to organize uh, the, uh, the offer with these new forms of mobility around the airport, 
to, to facilitate the, uh, the surface uh, access and then to reduce, of course, the CO2, uh, CO2 emissions on, on the road. Do you, do, do you see, uh, so do you, you talked about the, the role of the airport as coordinator. Did you in Toulouse start working on, on concretely on this subject and, and organize connections between uh, uh, carpooling and, uh, and, uh, and aircraft, for example? We, we have a, a role to play, but, but, but de definitely it's up to the uh, local po political decision makers to, uh, to, to drive. Uh, let me give you an example. We, uh, we participated in an EU-funded project uh, led by Toulouse Metropole. The objective was to, uh, uh, to implement um, a collaborative uh, management system for um, uh, reducing uh, the number of cars on, on, on roads uh, across the uh, metropolitan area. And uh, we, it's a success. Uh, it was a success. Um, we reduced from 70% to 60% the, the, uh, the share of solo car users. Why? Because we, uh, we promoted the, uh, the car sharing through a digital app called Caros, uh, on which thousands and thousands of people in Toulouse registered and used every day. So it's it's uh, just one 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 example. I, ca I can give you others. Of course, we are uh, uh, we we are partnering with with public and private operators for uh, car pooling and and scooters pooling. Uh, the fleet are uh, uh, at users and passengers disposal. Uh, the fleet are both fully electric, um, and it's just a, f a few meters away from the uh, main entrance of the of the terminal. So it's, it's really by proposing uh, a, a wide range of, of uh, mobility capacities that I think that we, uh, we will also uh, play a complementarity between ground and air transport. Thank you, Philippe. Um, so we, we, we basically say that intermodality is, uh, is the future for a lot of reasons, and decarbonation is one of them. We didn't talk about that, but in terms of airport capacity in the long term, there will be the lack of development, uh, obviously. So uh, intermodality uh, c can be also uh, uh, a way to uh, use more efficiently uh, capacities. Do you, uh, do you have a view uh, on this, uh, Guy, for example? Uh, clearly, many European airports are close to saturation. And it means that making the usage of the airport to where the plane is uh, cannot be replaced, like long haul, and whenever it is possible, making feeding with intermodality is also another way to solve the, uh, the capacity issue of the airport. So for that reason also, whenever it is possible, I guess uh, intermodality is, is, the right, uh, is the right solution, clearly. Um. Thank you, Guy. Um, we might uh, maybe open questions to, uh, to the room, J just to, to maybe sum up uh, what we, we just said. We say we need infrastructure. And this is, I would say, the, the most difficult part. And the, the example of, of Toulouse is a, is a, good, uh, a good example be because the, the, the government doesn't have in mind this intermodality uh, subject in, in, in Toulouse. We need, obviously, customer experience. Customer experience, customer experience, what you uh, really uh, focused on. And uh, I, I think it's, uh, it's absolutely key. We, we will not oblige people to, uh, to uh, use intermodality if it's not what they want and the, the kind of experience they, uh, they are looking for. Uh, we need commercial offer. We need to communicate uh, uh, about, about all of this. And I think more, most of all, we need all the, the stakeholders of intermodality uh, sit around the table to coordinate all these, uh, these actions. And uh, once again, we'll, we'll talk about Lyon, but I'm quite frustrated today because these discussions don't take place. And, uh, and my ideal world after this uh, round table is that we go to, uh, to sit uh, around to uh, be able to offer intermodality for uh, you know, uh, decarbonation reasons to uh, enhance catchment uh, area. We have infrastructure, and uh, uh, it'd be very interesting to, uh, to see how we can develop that. 
concretely. And Leon is a good example. I, I stopped the advertising. Do, do you allow me to add one remark? There is a paradox. We have a wonderful asset, having in two main airports in France, the high speed train in the very middle of the airport. This is the most complicated part because building that will cost hundreds of million euros. But it is done. So now we have to do the last step, which is the easiest part, which is working together to offer a nice, smooth, easy, and expensive uh, customer experience. But if you compare what is requested to build a nice speed train within an airport and the coordination work, let's do this, the easy last step. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Thank you, Guy. So maybe we can open the questions to, to the room. I can see uh, two gentlemen here. Yes, please. I think one of the big hassles is bringing the passenger from the city to the airport. Toulouse is a small city, but still it takes at least one hour to move from the city center to the airport. So one solution could be actually, as in the title of the, the conference, new mobility. I'm thinking of drones, for example, or VTOL. And I would have loved to, uh, to hear from, uh, from you, gentlemen, about these potential new mobilities. What do you think about it? Do you see it as a threat or as a new opportunity? <coughs> It's, it's for you, for you Philippe, Philippe, Philippe. I, I, I hope, hope I'm, I'm not, not too old to, uh, to, to see the, uh, the VTOL and uh, other forms of uh, urban air mobility. Um, uh, I, I share your point of view. Uh, the, the, the airports uh, has, have certainly a role to play uh, for that because we have space uh, to accommodate for this kind of, uh, of operations. Um, well, the challenge will be the same, uh, reducing uh, CO2 emissions, uh, the, 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 the uh, I would say, um, unmined uh, aerial vehicles um, are, are more uh, spotted on the, uh, I would say, uh, passenger experience uh, itself. Um, and, and I would like to, uh, to, to, to add that um, very, uh, very concretely, there will be still a combination of uh, mass uh, transport uh, mobility because we, we need to uh, to be able to uh, to transport large volume of, of passengers and uh, point to point uh, very specific uh, mobility um, on on the use um, uh, for each kind of, uh, of of users and it's really the mix of all of these kind of mobilities that uh, will help to uh, uh, to to face this uh, this challenge. Any other point of view on the question? Raphael. Actually, maybe maybe a reflection as it was, um, um, you know, we spoke before about, um, I think uh, you mentioned the uh, road transport being one of obviously the major, um, if we're talking about reducing emissions here, right? Um, well, obviously road transport is 71% of all transport emissions in Europe, right? Um, and then obviously you have about 13 point nine, I think, aviation, and then something similar, um, maritime and, and train, obviously, small. Um, I think, obviously, we have we have homework to do if we're going to be able to reduce that. The, the, the other thing we need to bear in mind when we correctly analyze the reduction of CO2 is we're talking about intermodality here in, a, in an area where we, you know, trains, I mean, according to Euro control studies, I mean, trains can be uh, probably an effective solution in in a, in a radius of 500 kilometers, more or less, right? And that's where um, a large number of of, of, tr of flights are taking place, right? 24%, a little more, right, of the flights in Europe are within this radius, but they only account for 3.9% of CO2. So again, even if we do all this work, I mean, on the CO2 side, uh, obviously, uh, it's correct about the access to. It's a major exercise that it has it has to do with the intermodality, but not maybe restricted to the areas that we are just discussing, right? Madam? Yep. Please, please. You want a microphone? Okay. I'll give you mine. Oh, no, we can hear you. 
that just to say about Toulouse, uh, that uh, I really think that it is, it is not a matter of prediction of future, of uh, building the uh, uh, GDP. Uh, because if you, you know the problem of climate is a very close to now problem. We have to, to find some reduction of the uh, Sorry about my English. In a very short time, and when you build a build a big infrastructure, you start spending a lot of heat. When uh, uh, LGBS East was uh, built, um, a study was done about how long it could last before before we can get a, a, a start of earning in city, and it was 40. Fourth year of use. New reaction on the SNCF side? First of all, I just want to remind to the audience that um, train is the most greener mode of transportation. I think it's very important to, to, to be aware of that. Um, and a journey by train emits 50 times, you say, less uh, greenhouse um, than a, a, a journey in, in car and 40 times less um, greenhouse gases than a journey by plane. So that's the first point. Then I think we have to, 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 to think in a long-term perspective. We have to think to our children and great-grandchildren. That's why it's very important to, to build such sustainable infrastructure. I don't want to open a debate with you, uh, but I think if we will be able to have um, an infrastructure with high-speed train relevant, you know, for the customer, that's why I was telling that. You, you say a 500 kilometers ri radius uh, makes a, a, a journey by train relevant. Yes, it's a, th a three-hour journey. Okay, it's relevant when you, you travel to Nice from Paris to Marseille. It's relevant to take the train and not to take the plane, definitely. Uh, between three and four, you can discuss this point. But I do believe, and it's not because uh, I'm working with the French National Railway, that uh, if we have a, a very efficient railway network in France and in Europe, I think it's, it's a much better solution for us and our children. Any, wait, Mr. Yeah, um, there we talk about new mobilities. Uh, we should not uh, forget about the customer and its demand. So one example, when you mentioned uh, connecting uh, Toulouse Airport, uh, I'm not so sure that people living in Paris will take a train uh, to go to Toulouse Airport and, and take a flight because the network in Paris is much wider. There was this example when uh, uh, Marseille was connected to Lyon Airport. Uh, some carriers were expecting demand uh, from Marseille area to take plane in Lyon. It didn't happen. Then you you mentioned as well the um, uh, the self connection that happened a lot. Uh, I think Nantes Airport they estimate they have a leakage of maybe 20, 30 percent of people taking plane either by car or by train. And though, back, that's my question, 
is um, you mentioned about customer experience. I think it never happened that an infrastructure, airport infrastructure, with high-speed train, integrate, fully integrate in the luggage sorting facility, the connection with the train. And that's the main issue, I think, for customer experience. And it has not been designated, right? Uh, clearly, this is a point that needs to be improved uh, because even when the station is at the middle of the airport, there is still a, a journey between 500 meters to one kilometer for the customer to go from the train station to the check-in area. And if you have no luggage, it's easy. If you are traveling on vacation with your family, with your kids, it can it is something of a burden. So that's why, uh, and this is something that you are right that need to be addressed to offer a seamless experience. It's, it's not an easy uh, thing that can be done, done like that because it requires connecting uh, the train station with the baggage sorter of the airport. We are, I, I see Mark uh, well as a <laughs> managing CDG airport. We are discussing a lot on the subject together. It is feasible because there is a baggage sorter that is going very close to uh, the railway station. It's not small money. Uh, so and I understand that uh, it is an investment that will be made uh, at some point because the future is intermodality, and that's why we need to be discussing intermodality between the railway network, the airlines community, the airport community, and to make sure that there is enough traffic to make this investment reliable. But we clearly see there is a, a huge gap in the customer experience between Brussels, where we offer the full luggage service, but we do it with manual handling, paid by reference, which is very costly. And the right solution is not having people uh, carrying luggage, is having the, <laughs> having the link with the sorter. Uh, but when we clearly see a gap in the customer experience, I say that Brussels is the perfect match because we are offering a perfect point-to-point -point experience. And with Brussels, uh, we have been able to, to offer the full ticket. Uh, we, we, uh, there is the, I don't know if you noticed, uh, when Fabrice mentioned the numbers of connection, he said, is selling 160,000 tickets, and I'm saying 240,000. Actually, the two figures are true. <laughs> none, of, none of the two is lying. The difference is the 80,000 customer on Brussels, because on, on Brussels, is not selling the ticket. We bought, really, a car on the train, and we manage it, and we sell it. So that's, uh, <laughs> and, and then, because we do it, we are able to offer a seamless experience to a customer. We manage the luggage. When there is a misconnection, we can do everything. I mean, to offer the seamless experience, we had to, to add a different model with the with Stalis, the operating of the train between. Uh, and we say, okay, we're not by, we're not discussing uh, the price of one ticket. We buy every car, a car on every train, and then we manage it. We do the we do the pricing. We do everything, uh, and then we, we this is the perfect match. But this cannot be extended to any destination. We've tried to do it in Strasbourg, and it failed economically. I mean, the, the, the quality of the service was perfect, but it was economically, so I agree. And some things, again, but once we have done building a nice big train in CDG, in Lyon, is something very costly, so that we need to do the last add-ons for the baggage shorter and the, last, and the communication between us. It was exactly the same when you experienced you know, to take the luggage from Paris North Station to Roissy Charles de Gaulle. I think it was very relevant from the customer experience. However, it was so difficult to balance the budget. And we have to work on it and to improve and to find the real economic uh, balance of, uh, of his operation. Uh, yes, I have a question for Mr. Moreno. Uh, so uh, concerning the Euro airport of basel Milos uh, Freiburg, <coughs> and uh, yeah, uh, they have had a project uh, of uh, connecting uh, train and, and plane in the 1890s. Why uh, it materialized? Uh, it wasn't materialized earlier. And I have a second question. Uh, the project is now uh, on the on the road in 2017, uh, 2020, 17. Uh, no, no, sorry, 2007, uh, 2000, you know, 20, uh, 2020. Sorry, and um, yeah, uh, it is uh, intermodality will uh, works and how is it works with uh, in the future with in uh, Basel uh, Basel Airport? Yeah, sorry for my English. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, I'm very sorry. Uh, I'm not very aware of this project. Uh, okay. I've been once in Mulhouse Airport to fly from Mulhouse to Marseille. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's it. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, okay, no problem. Maybe uh, I can make some research and I will uh, yes with you and provide you some more. Okay, questions. thank you, thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, maybe one more question because. Uh, as, uh, as in France, you have some contact with the uh, national French Yes, uh, we have a kind of um, we have a un uh, union of international Roy uh, sorry railway UIC, uh, and I'm the chairman of uh, the station manager global group, and we every two weeks we we meet and we work on how to improve intermodality, how to improve connection uh, between the station and the neighborhood and the territory, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we and this 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 group, um, yes, we have maybe it's it's not it's not a European um, association. It's an international association, and we have maybe around 50 members, 50 active members, and we work on all these topics uh, uh, in Europe, in, in Asia, uh, in North in North and South America. So yes, we do we do work on this subject, and it's very very important because I think it's really the way. Uh, to, 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 to propose uh, a much greener mode of transportation. Thank you very much. I think uh, we uh, are reaching uh, time. I hope uh, this was uh, interesting. Thank you very much for uh, all Thank you. Thank you.